Hi there, I'm Karen Brown. I'm a graduate student here at Cuban College in the nursing education program. Um, my current uh, work setting is I'm a certified wound ostomy continence nurse, certified foot care nurse. And I work as an education coordinator in uh, acute care setting as well as in home health and um, hospice. And I'm going to present to you today my uh, project for acute care, leading a pressure ulcer competency project for acute care. Now there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to uh, develop this program, three main reasons. One, our hospital really didn't have um, a very specific and formal education program to teach our nurses consistently um, how to prevent pressure ulcers. We had some just kind of scattered information. The second thing that I found in working with our graduate um, nurse program that we have at the hospital I work in, um, the nurses, this was kind of a more informal needs assessment that I found, was that they, uh, the nurses would constantly ask us, well, how do I take care of this wound? How do I take care of this wound? When really we wanted to shift their focus and help them understand how to prevent this wound. So that's where we were trying to go with this education program, and that's what you'll see um, throughout where I'm trying to go with this. And then this case summary, this is an actual situation that happened at my hospital. We had an 82-year-old woman come in, um, admitted with confusion. She was living in the community before she came in. And the nurses did a skin assessment, but within 30 hours of her admission. And we found a very large pressure ulcer. Now, our hospital policy was that we had to provide a good skin assessment within 24 hours of admission. So what ended up happening with this is we, we received a referral um, in the wound department. I happened to be on that day. And uh, I, I assessed the wound, and it was a stage 4 pressure ulcer. So now we know in clinical practice that these pressure ulcers don't happen in 30 hours of admission. However, we missed the mark. And unfortunately, our hospital ended up paying for two surgical wound debridements, um, a negative pressure wound therapy device, very expensive. And also, because of her extended stay, she ended up having uh, needing rehab, so she couldn't go back to her home setting. So our hospital ended up having to foot the bill for some of this, and she was a physician's mother. So this, this was why um, one of the reasons why I felt like we needed to develop a more formal education program. We also kind of, it brought up a lot of questions for us. What are we doing wrong? How come we missed that 24-hour marker? Um, and then what happens next out of situations such as this? <clears throat> So I'm going to talk about the background of pressure ulcers and how, why all of this is so important uh, nowadays is because back in 2008, uh, CMS, or the Centers for Medicaid and Medi Medicare and Medicaid Services, they started to look at quality um, outcomes and quality measures for reimbursing uh, hospital systems for certain nosocomial conditions. And one of them are uh, the treatment of stage 3 and 4 pressure ulcers. So when we look at that, um, back in 2008 is when there was a big hubbub in our health systems to try and make um, education programs more uniform across the board and especially related to pressure ulcers. And as we, um, as we know, full thickness wounds are very debilitating for the patients. When a patient develops these types of wounds, the skin does not grow back um, normal, like if you would just get a, a smaller wound, it will, it will never grow back um, and be as strong as the uh, previous skin was. So we know that the patients have uh, pretty significant debility from pressure ulcers such as these. And we also, with some statistics here, if we look at this, 60,000 US patients die annually because of complications related to HAP use, that's hospital acquired pressure ulcers. That's really significant. And we, as health systems, we need to help reduce these incidents and really try to figure out what we're doing wrong here. Um, there are also legal implications for hospital systems and also reputation issues. Now on the, on the web, we can go to Hospital Compare, and they list several different types of um, quality indicators for nursing and for the hospital in general, and um, hospital card pressure ulcers are one of them. To treat a full thickness wound, maybe around $40,000. I, I would tend to see that that's up in the higher range now. Uh, so when we look at, in my area, uh, when I was looking at some um, salaries for nursing, training 500 nurses in an acute care setting for a two-hour session, that's about $30,000 a year, and that's less than what it would take to treat 
one's a full thickness wound. So that's pretty significant when you're looking at education programs and cost. So going back into pressure ulcers and wounds way back in the day, these wounds were always kind of there. Um, medical community, people didn't really understand what they were caused from. Now we have a lot of that information, and thankfully so, we have the NPUAP, which is the National Pressure, Pressure Advisory Panel, and they help us with our education, they help us with the staging of pressure ulcers, so that's the go-to for when we're looking at staging wounds, staging, not wounds, staging pressure ulcers, that's the guideline that we follow in the United States for, for um, how we classify these wounds. <clears throat> and then we also have the WOCN, the Wound Ostomy Continence Nursing Society, and that is where um, there's a big poll of educators who are taught in that in that group and are very specific have really good and specific knowledge base uh, related to pressure ulcers. But we also know too that wound care and skin care is a multidisciplinary. It takes a team to really make that happen. However, it is really looked at as a nursing quality indicator um, related to uh, those hospital measures that we we discussed earlier. So the research question is, will a certified wound ostomy continence nurse-led program uh, for acute care nurses decrease the hospital acquired pressure ulcer rate? And I'm going to break that down a little bit more for us in our PICO. So our population is that we know that there's some knowledge, a lack of knowledge with pressure ulcer prevention strategies and also the staging of wounds, uh, specifically pressure ulcers, with, among our acute care nurses. Our intervention, and I'll talk about this a little bit more, is that I'm going to focus on three main areas, skin and risk assessment, um, placing intervention strategies, and then also staging pressure ulcers properly. And comparison, and I put in here no yearly competency training, however, in, our, in my hospital we do have just a short little, we only get like a 20-30 minute little blurb on um, orientation days or re nursing reorientation, so this is a little bit more specific. Um, and compact. And then our outcome is going to be looking at, um, you'll see this in a little bit here, 80% uh, or higher on a post-test, looking also at the um, um, chart audits, and then overall really the goal is to decrease the hospital acquired pressure ulcer rate. So uh, when we're developing programs such as these, we do need to use our theorists to help pull things together. And I also chose Malcolm Knowles because of his andragogy theory. Uh, looking at working with our adult colleagues, we need to know how to educate adults. Uh, very different from uh, younger children, from younger people. And nowadays, we do need uh, to really pull together our, um, our, the knowledge base of our colleagues. Um, they bring to us such great life experiences. And when you're Looking at, and I'll talk about this in a minute too, is there are, there are reasons why skin isn't um, deemed important in clinical practice to some nurses. So we need to pull those, the, that information together. What kind of um, background do they have? They like to see that the information that you're presenting is really relevant to where they're going, what they're doing, and also that they, um, they like to have the interaction. They don't want to be just lectured at. They want to have that interaction. They want to pull it all together and, and really make it be um, a, a meaningful uh, learning. I'm also going to be talking about um, Pat Benner. And she is, um, she's, the, she's the theorist who looked at our novice to expert in clinical practice. And what I like about this is that it breaks it down into um, what, what the strengths are of that expert clinician. So, in mine, it's uh, the WOCN having the, uh, the great knowledge base and the communication and the being able to just pull it all together and present that to our novice or novice colleagues, but also to a more experienced colleague that may not have the information and the knowledge base about um, taking care of wounds or uh, preventing pressure ulcers. The uh, expert clinicians, they coordinate plans of care well, they're very organized, they have that seasoned nurse um, feel, and then putting that together with um, a, being a nurse educator, all of that comes together. Our novice nur nurses, they need some time, they're very task-oriented, they can't quite, they see, okay, well I can do a skin assessment, 
and a risk assessment, but what, what do I do next? I have that information, but I can't quite get there yet. So that's why the novice to expert in clinical practice is a good um, theory for this program. So when I looked at the literature, there's just a wealth of information out there about pressure ulcers and staging and what do we do about them. So I really focused my search on um, education programs um, for pressure ulcers and also for um, in the acute care setting because we could go on about all different kind of settings. So with that, there were still many, um, many articles to research and I narrowed it down to 42 articles. Within that, I used 10 for my paper and then I'll just present to you the three today <clears throat> that I felt were, more, were most um, prevalent. So the first research article, this was done uh, in an Ohio a hospital. And what was happening in their hospital where they felt like they needed to kind of enhance their education program was that they were looking at, there were some conflicting risk scores and then preventative measures taking place. Um, and they didn't really have good documentation on how they were uh, putting their preventative measures into place. So what they developed was a resource nurse program and what I liked about this was that they took nurses in, um, like in each of their units and who had some enthusiasm, some knowledge already about wounds, um, just kind of go-getters. And they said, come on and be with us. Let's, I'm going to have you be our resource nurse for this program. And so what those responsibilities were, they did a lot of rounding with their colleagues. They were still assigned to their, so this was above and beyond their regular duty. They were still assigned to that, um, you know, taking care of, care of patients, but they also helped with rounding, with putting interventions in place. They worked with their uh, wound care team. They helped look at it, what were the hospital acquired pressure ulcers, what, um, what was causing those hospital acquired pressure ulcers, and just doing a lot of ongoing support and education. And it was amazing the results that they had. Significant reduction in hospital acquired pressure ulcers over the long term. I think it was like a two or three year study. And, um, and then some units even went to zero over this time frame. So that's really significant. And we all know that nurses are power. And when we put programs into place, um, this was very evident. And I love this quote too. This program fostered teamwork and encouraged collaboration and critical inquiry, resulting in sustainable changes in clinical practice. So we know that when, when nurses get together, when we put these things in place, these things happen. But it does take more than just nursing. <clears throat> The next article uh, that I looked at was a systematic review. And what they were looking at was, as a whole, how are we doing with education programs related to hospital acquired pressure ulcers? So there were 26 studies, and they looked at both acute and long-term care facilities. And some key theme themes, and I think this is ongoing in programs such as this that we're looking at developing, is you need that leadership support. If you don't have a buy-in with your hospital system, if they don't think that preventing pressure ulcers are important, you're not going to get anywhere. And so what these articles show that if you had that leadership support, it was you were just going to be, you were going to go gung-ho and it was going to work for you. Looking at key educators, and again, you have to carve out the person or the team that will give you, um, that, will, that is an educator, that's also a, um, a clinical expert in the field. So looking at that WOCN piece, presenting the material, having them develop the program so that it makes sense on an education standpoint and on a um, clinical standpoint, putting all those pieces together. That is what this article um, also looked at. And then also um, the, the, the multidisciplinary approach. It's not just nursing. However, my program is team to nursing, but could be enhanced to other clinicians because we know our support staff are just greatly needed um, because they are those the hands-on key players here. So again, our nurse-led programs were most successful. That doesn't surprise us any because as we know, nurses are power. Um, it helped to hold our colleagues accountable, and that's what this uh, article looked at. And they all, all of them used the NPUA guidelines, so that's the National Pressure, Pressure Ulcer Advis Advisory Panel. <clears throat> now the last article I wanted to kind of get out there to see what other countries were doing. There were several that I looked up up in Canada on Europe. And this one was done um, in Sweden, and it was a large population, so I chose this one to kind of talk about today. And this was not surprising, but also need, helped me to kind of think about, okay, what are we gonna do with this problem? 
and so they looked at if patients were, uh, if they were, if they came in and they were identified as being a risk for pressure ulcers, were preventative strategies implemented right away, even if the nursing staff uh, had the tools available. And so what they found was no. And why, why wasn't that happening? And that was where the research kind of stopped and said, ooh, well, we need to kind of identify what the problem is from, okay, we get here, but then we don't get here. And that was also a common theme in some of the other research articles that I looked at was nurses have many tasks. They have, um, they're not at the bedside as much. They have a lot of other maybe um, uh, likes and, and different specialties that they wanted to focus on. So skin maybe wasn't on the forefront of their mind. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So with this article, um, what they really stressed was that nurses, they know the information. They have to just take it the next step. And how do we do that? And just to implement strategies uh, early on was really what they stressed here. So looking at clinical application, how do we apply this research to this program to make this all fit? And three main, theme, main themes came about here, um, looking at the nurse educator and the expert clin clinician. So if you pair the nurse educator with the expert clinician, like I talked about, and how what it what it did discuss in different articles, uh, that WOCN is your nurse that has a, a deep knowledge on skin and preventative techniques on wounds, um, and then pairing that with the nurse educator and everything that we've learned on how to present uh, material in an appropriate way, looking at uh, Malcolm Knowles and his adult learning theory and tying that all in together, we know that these pro this program would be successful based on that information. We also know that nurses have power, so this is our app clinical application number two of the research. The programs that were successful had nurse-led and directed programs, and that was not, not just by the expert clinicians, that was by the, um, the programs that were, or, or the uh, units that wanted to make this a priority, where they gathered their key team players, um, worked with the expert clinicians, and made it a priority on their teams. So that is, and we know that, um, and even looking at the IOM report at the Institute of Medicine, where nurses are going to be out in different roles, be playing different um, kinds of um, leadership type of programs, we know that nurses have power and that they will uh, make change, good changes happen uh, when they're put in these types of roles. And also that hooks us with our Benner, um, Pat Benner and her model with the nurse, uh, the expert to nursing um, clinical practice because we know, again, that nurses who lead um, will help bring up our um, young nurses and help them hopefully have some, um, to get them more educated uh, regarding skin care. And clinical application number three was what I mentioned before is kind of an unexpected finding that nurses maybe really don't care about skin. Or is it that we are very tasked? We have a lot on our plate. Uh, we have a lot of information that we need to get back and forth. We have a lot of paperwork that needs to happen through the day. So what do we do from there? And that part, I haven't really figured that out. Um, in this, that could be a whole nother um, graduate program is to how to get nurses to have passion for something I have passion about. And so that could be a whole nother, a whole nother project. But um, again, looking at how to put your presentation together, working with that andragogy principles, making the program exciting, enthusiastic, uh, maybe using a little bit of humor, uh, looking at your teaching methods and how appropriate they are to what you're trying to get across, and, and just helping, letting, letting your um, classroom know that what the information and the uh, experience that they've had to pull that all together will um, really help hopefully look at why we're not preventing pressure ulcers. So my project is a um, two-year, a two-year, oh my gosh, that'd be awful, um, two-hour, <laughs> yearly, two-hour yearly competency program for um, all of the acute care nurses. 
looking at a couple of different teaching strategies, and I've implemented um, using the case study instructional method to present the Braden scale. I've been starting to use that now, um, just with the, the short little 20 little blurb that I get with them right now, and they really like it because we you present a case study, you get them talking, and the interaction that comes with that is just great. So that will help really make them under help them understand um, how to do a really good risk assessment. Now looking at how to do a skin assessment, I still haven't quite figured out if I'm gonna get somebody to volunteer to let us do a skin assessment, so I thought probably a clothed assessment would be okay. Um, doing some group discussion and collaboration on what marks we're looking at, um, maybe some different patients that might be more prone to developing these pressure ulcers, so that'll be a group discussion method uh, and, and using that. Looking at all of the hands-on products that we have available, and I could string them all along here, letting, handing them out, passing them out to uh, the staff, and I do do that already. Um, a lot of times we just don't have enough time to really talk about how these things really work in clinical practice. Also to have our we have specialty mattresses in our facility that um, help offload the patient in certain areas, uh, doing some demonstration with them on how to turn a position and get somebody um, to where we're gonna offload those certain areas. And then the bigger piece I really wanna focus on is, is the intervention section that we talked about, but then also going to how we're going to stage pressure ulcers properly because there is so much, we get consults and referrals all the time on, uh, it's, a, it's really what it is, they think it's a pressure ulcer, but really it's moisture associated condition or we get a leg ulcer and it's, it is a leg ulcer, it's not a pressure ulcer. So that's where we've really seen some gaps in knowledge. So there's three areas that I want to focus on in my program here. We have staging guides that are really nice, um, little like hard cards um, from the NPUAP. They put, they put those out and they're free. Um, those will be handed out to them and discussed. There is a great um, study done in Utah, and I think I presented before too, uh, the Fruits of Pressure Ulcer Identification. And it's a great little tool, and it gives you it lists um, all the different stages of pressure ulcers and then it compares them to rotting fruit. So what a great visual for that. And it's, um, it's a really great tool. And also to just discuss all of each of those stages um, in that way. And then the next, the last method that we'll be using is a gaming instructional method. And I think this is a kind of a fun way to tie things up. Um, showing pictures because the pictures says a thousand words. I love pictures when I'm at, um, when I'm at programs uh, because it really puts it all together for you. So name that pressure ulcer. It'll be just pictures. I'm not going to have it be like a formal, you have to write things out, but just more of a somebody tell me what this pressure ulcer is. Let's talk about it. How does it form? What are the, what are the um, identifiers of this wound versus um, a different kind of wound? And of course, again, again, we need to kind of look at the evaluation piece of everything to do a quick summative evaluation. We'll be making a post-test quiz. Now this quiz, to, to really look at the validity of it, um, the wound ostomy incontinence team will develop it, but also use an outside resource who's a nurse practitioner and certified in wound care to also look at our test to make sure that it is appropriate um, for the program. It'll be a 10 multiple, multiple choice question, and um, you know we'll score that that way. Uh, looking at those four areas of the teaching Chart audits will be done, and we'll, the chart audits will be looked at from a, if we get a referral to see a patient for a pressure ulcer, we would see what the nurses um, staged that at, and what their risk score was for the patient, what their assessment was, and then the wound ostomy team would also look at it. So if we, if we determined that it was different um, with their risk score and also with their pressure ulcer um, staging, then that's, that's how that'll be looked at. And, We'll use that information to kind of um, modify on a quarterly basis the um, ongoing teaching. And then we also do quarterly pressure ulcer um, prevalence studies, so hopefully we'll have some good results with that. So just to kind of sum it up, um, we know that acute care nurses have some knowledge deficit in um, how to really prevent pressure ulcers, and then also to take it to those next stages on um, putting in your interventions. We know that um, expert, expert clinicians and um, nurse educators are really valuable in, in programs such as these. They help coordinate um, 
the uh, education and the um, theories of Malcolm Knowles and Pat Benner, um, bring those two together in presenting a good program. And we know that the goals of our health system really are to keep our patients healthy and safe and to not give them anything that they don't want to go home with, except for like a baby maybe. Um, and then just also that we have that goal. We, we know that nurses are busy and we want to take into consideration uh, their information and all of that when you put these programs in together. And so we're going to wrap it up. Thank you.